Welcome everyone to the Sickos Committee podcast. This is our podcast for the evening of the third. Nope. Once again, March 19th, 2023. It is in the middle of March madness or March mania or March maladaptiveness or what were some other good ones we came up with? March malaise. March man, I haven't done any work this weekend. March man, I haven't done any work this week. Yeah. I have, uh, my name is Jordan. I have been sick for the last three days, so I'm going to be wonderfully scratchy. I have a lovely group of folks tonight that will be talking over me, which is great because that'll be very helpful. Tonight, we have the Kamish, Andrew, Beth, Pit Girl, and Dr. Garage. Let's start with Kamish. How are you? It's been a rough one, but uh, I've, I've really enjoyed the, the March Madness and the, um, the fun that we're having on the, the at Sicko CVV account by beveling all the logos. Uh, so each time they advance to another round, I get to bevel a logo even further. There's some other, there's some folks in the mentions like, well, you should bevel my profile picture to show that it's easy. And I'm like, no, <laughs> there's other, like the bevel, it's this, that bevel easy, that. like you can learn to do it. I was like, yeah, I was like, Hey, I mean, if I could learn to do it, it is, it is pretty easy, but it, it does take a little bit of, you know, maybe like a YouTube video or, or, or two, um, really not, not too good at the full Photoshop, but just doubling. Yeah, I can, I can handle that. Maybe, maybe if we ever have a, uh, a Patreon, one of our reward levels will be, we will show, we'll we'll send you a PDF on how to bevel your own things. Or, I mean, you know, maybe we will just be like, you know, you want the beveling tier Okay, 15 bucks a month. Oh, there we go. It. Like that. We'll, we'll, <laughs> bevel, we'll bevel one item for you a month. The beveling Patreon level. That's all you get. Bevel level. That's it. <laughs> Super sick. Hey girl, how are you doing? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, you guys may have heard me make a sound while Kamish was talking, and that is because uh, the FAU FDU game has just ended, and it ended with Florida Atlantic trying to like dunk on them and failing spectacularly. I'm trying to take a video of that uh, right now. That's why my phone is off. Yeah. So um, congratulations to FAU for advancing, breaking news. Um, also, congratulations to Fairleigh Dickinson for getting as far as you got in the first place. We'll talk about that more later. Beth, how are you? Oh, it's fine. Everything's fine. It continues to be fine. It will be fine for the next month. <laughs> how many shows do you have in the next month? Uh, three. Uh-huh. There we go. Excited for you. Also, uh, not to not to worry you, but we still get a preview of your recital on here at some point. Oh, delightful! You've promised. <laughs> well, by, that's by what's promise, happening at the end of this month. By promise, so. you, by promise, I mean I harangued you into doing it. Either way, yeah. Doctor I'll play Gr the most avant-garde thing I have. Please, uh, please do. You know the one I want to hear. Yeah, I know exactly the one you want to yeah. hear. Uh, Doctor Graj, how are you doing, sir? I, you know, I'm thriving. Um, this is my favorite sports weekend of the year. Uh, it was a weird year because uh, I root for two teams, Michigan and Northwestern, primarily, and Northwestern was uh, an elite sicko team this year that actually made the tournament and won a game, and uh, Michigan is an even more elite sicko team that uh, crashed out of the NIT in some of the most humiliating fashion possible. But it's all basketball, and that's all I can ask. And Andrew, how are you holding up? Uh, a little dizzy, honestly, but today was a better day for not being, trying to watch like seven things at once. Yesterday was the roughest one because there were a lot of good women's games on yesterday. So I had like four screens going and that was, that was too much. I learned during football season that three is like the limit that you can watch without making, giving yourself vertigo. So, but we're, we're, we're rolling. I just, uh, I just posted the video of the, uh, of the, of the sick Miss Dunk. On the, on the account, so that's that's where we're at in time. But yeah, congrats to FAU. That's where we're at. Well, I think I think as appropriate for this time of year, this whole episode is going to be a lot of bu 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 basketball. So I will hit the music right here. Bu 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 basketball, gimme 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 the ball because I'm gonna dunk it. Woo! It's March Madness, and we're talking about basketball. Okay. Woo! So I guess our big story is number 16 FDU. Much of the chagrin in some of our Purdue fans who don't want to have this conversation. <laughs> the Fairly Dickinson Knights, the name I couldn't pronounce, that I didn't think I would have to pronounce, didn't think it would matter. Turns out it mattered an awful lot. 
yeah, yeah and, go knights that uh, was really exciting it was like watching a team of ants take down an elephant <laughs> whoever posted the uh the picture from gulliver's oh, travels yeah that, mm -hmm. that made me super happy because that was pretty much it yes and yeah. you know sack ed is from brobdignag uh, which was the land of the giants and mm -hmm. somehow the lilliputians took out a brobdignagian so uh, it was a <laughs> it was a spectacular evening thank you for that I don't I don't know who posted that uh but it was I don't I don't know wait was that you Andrew No or... I cannot take credit for that That was, was very that, was good though Was it Beard King? It was Might, have been, beard, Might yeah. have been Beard King. It was probably the Beard King. Uh shout out Beard King. My favorite part of the FDU um thing like the upset so like you know when there's a 16 seed that's leading a 1 seed we we typically you know do this stupid tweet stop the count <laughs> uh, so I did the tweet for a stop the count when <laughs> Fairleigh Dickinson was up 8-7 over <laughs> Purdue. And I got so many replies after they pulled off the upset, like, oh, well, the, well they didn't need to stop the count. And then I was just like, like really? You're going to give me some shit for like a 16 seed <laughs> upsetting <laughs> a one seed? But it was, and there was like, no, this, this aged well, actually. You know, I was <laughs> like, like, just give me. Come on, man. The best, the best for all the Purdue fans being, look, you really think this is going to happen? In our mentions, and we, I was just like, I'm not going to say a word. If you're that defensive, then if you're that defensive, then you're worried about it. And if you're worried about it, then I'm not here to like needle your on your worries. <laughs> However, so I was the listening to. Sorry, go ahead, Jordan. I was like, the nightmare comes true sometimes. Night does, and I was listening on the radio. And there was a very over enthusiastic radio announcer, and this was in the first half. Fairly Dickinson was up barely, like twelve to ten or something like that at that point. And the announcer said, "The smallest team is fighting the biggest man with a plug." <laughs> and just the the smallest team and the biggest man. It was glorious. That that guy need, deserves a raise. Um, yeah, the definitive call of the game, from so far as I'm concerned. <laughs> And honestly, from a basketball standpoint, like zooming out, I do actually think it's a bigger sickos win and the biggest upset in the tournament's history because they had to come through the first four too. So they had to win a game in Dayton, which gets us to the fact that the band that was playing for them is not the FDU band. It's the Dayton band who was ready to be in potentially the NIT, but they didn't get picked and they lost to VCU in their championship game. So... They were ready to play for Fairleigh Dickinson and learn the fight song the day of the first four game. So the the parts of the story that are beautiful. Go ahead, pick girl, because yeah, speak on I, this because this is good. I am all up in my feelings about about the Dayton band um, doing this for Fairleigh Dickinson. It's always heartwarming when this happens. I remember one year the Weber State band covered for Pitt, and that was incredibly mm -hmm. heartwarming as well. But the thing that really got me here is that Fairleigh Dickinson doesn't have a basketball band <laughs> per Twitter. And the players had never heard their own fight song before Aww. Friday. Like, ah, feelings. Sports so one great. of one of my very favorite things about um, the tournament is when you get a chance to go to the games, especially the early round games, and you just stick around all day, what you'll find is a lot of the bands will learn the fight songs of other schools that are playing in a way to sort of like, can I recruit these fans to cheer for me later on in the game? Uh, I, I watched the Cornell band do this to great effect up in Syracuse one year. And it, it is so much fun to watch them do it just because like people are just like, well, I don't know anything about this team, but I'm cheering for them now because their band's awesome. <laughs> it's just so much fun. It is the coolest, like one of the, one of the cool pure things that remains. Another cool thing about this is, was that the Dayton band only played for the round of 64 and the round of 32. The Dayton band didn't actually play for them at that 64 match, at the, at the first four match, because the Dayton band was still unsure where they were going to end up. Mm -hmm. So a high school band set in for them, which is also amazing. Love that. Like, that's that's so great. A great chance for the high school kids to come in and play at an NCAA tournament game. I just, so much fun. I talked about it last time, the, I think the last time or two times ago, when I went to the Frisco Bowl this year, and it was a high school band playing as a Boise band. Just made me happy. Like... Good for them. They got Boise gear. They got to sit in the stands. They got to learn a fight song. Someone else asked, like, oh, is this unusual for, like, pep bands? I was like, there's, like, 
there are just some places that are small enough they don't have bands like that mm -hmm. exists we were we were we were counting shit and i'll cut this if i don't want to talk about this team a whole lot but uh, oral roberts band showed up and we were all like ho 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 fucking looks like the earth wind and fire cover band that plays down at the vfw hall every saturday and it turned out it kind of was it was like their biology professors <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, was like, and it was like the biology professors and a bunch, a bunch of like their like older dudes, yeah. And I mean, Jordan, as you know, like even in schools that have music degrees and music programs, most of the time doing basketball pep band is just like basically an intramural band thing. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You put your name up on a bulletin board and you're playing this week. Yeah, it depends. If, if if so, if you don't know, there are some places that are big enough that these are like cash positions. Yes. Either they're scholarship or you get paid cash to play these things. But for most places, it is literally just whoever shows up. That's how Dartmouth Band was. That's how a lot of places are. Basically, it's only places like I mean, my other example is North Texas. And North Texas, like you are hired to the position to the point where if you don't show up, you have to find a substitute. Like it's, yeah. a, like it's a real gig. Like you have to find another trombone player to sit and play through trombone because you were hired to play through trombone on this band. It's a big deal. Yeah. But, IUP is headed in that direction. It had been a sign up on the bulletin board thing, but I don't think it's going to stay that way. So it's a very broad breadth. I had an ex-girlfriend that played the Syracuse, one of the Syracuse pep bands and same thing. You had to, you know, you worked your way up to getting to play to watch shitty Syracuse basketball. That was a, that was a bonus if you got to watch sh shitty Syracuse basketball. Otherwise you had to watch city Syracuse. I don't know what. No, that's okay. They have, okay they have two too. to three bands, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly right. So, so that that Fairly Dickinson didn't know their fight, like they, they never heard their fight song before, is not a surprise because those mm -hmm. kinds of things sometimes are just when you think about okay, what it takes to have a basketball team. That's what, 12, 14 players. I forget. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have to go on a D one roster. It's about 12, 14 players. Yeah. You have to suit out. I think seven or eight for sure. We've definitely seen IUPUI suit fewer than that last year. Uh, and hold on for dear life. We've also seen, you know, I think it was UTRGV one time where they were like yelling at one of their athletic, one of their like student assistants to go put a jersey on for the last two minutes of the game and just tell them to get the fuck out there. So this happened. So the fact that they don't have a, also a band, you know, is not surprising. Uh, some quick fun facts about Fairleigh Dickinson that I did not know. Hey, uh, everyone, where is that school from? We know New Jersey, but we're in New Jersey. I know. You want? I know too. They're in Hackensack. I was going to guess Hackensack. What? No, it's in Teaneck, isn't it? It's no, in they're, they're, in, they're, in, they're in Madison. What? Madison, New Jersey. It it has multiple campuses. Oh, does it? Okay. Oh, it's like Rutgers, Mad kind of. Fa Madison Fairleigh's is Dickinson campus. or Fairly okay. Dickinson's? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I made the uh, DS. And their, their mascot there. is yes. the Knights. We know that. What is their mascot's name? I want it to be like Kenorman or something. <laughs> they had some sort of nitro. Yeah, nitro, nitro yes. just like UCF, right? It is nitro, but it looks like, and I'm dropping this in the Discord here. Uh, it does look, it does look like Boise State's mascot. Yeah, it looks like a discount Boise State, but that's a great, that's a great thing. I'm there very was, happy that it's there. That. Was one that I saw that they had the Devils? Like it was like they were originally the Devils, devils yes. Oh, okay, and they changed the, the with the Jersey Devil and, thing. They should have stuck with that. I do like the check, the chess piece, but the plush mascot is very. We have Boise State at home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they stole that from the Denver airport, and you will never convince me otherwise. <laughs> this is their old logo, and it's kind of awesome. Oh, oh, I love come it. Come on, that's so much better. Oh, yeah, that's really good. Yeah, yeah. I like that a lot. Same graphic designer as the new one. Yeah, it just it doesn't quite have the same. I'm trying to find out how many students they actually have at this school. That's actually harder to find. I ended up Googling total enrollment. It's about 11,000 as of 2013. Okay. But they do definitely, okay, they def, it is definitely as a like bunch of campuses kind of playing kind of thing. Ooh, something called Roxton College. W-R-O-X-T-O-N College is a version of FDU in Roxton, Oxfordshire, Oxfordshire, got that. In Southeast England. Oh, I didn't know that they, they are a campus for some reason. I don't know, but that has that logo has a bunch of awesome things, including I think three swans, a Florida Lee, three lines, an English lion, and I don't remember my uh, my heraldry very well, but I believe that is a a shield uh, jagged or checkered Lee or something. I can't remember all these words. One of these days we're gonna do a we're gonna do a, a not just a vexillology exam, but a heraldry exam. You guys are gonna have a lot of fun with that. I assure you. Yes. Uh, and Picker, what is up? Is this about their SID? 
Yeah, so their basketball SID is an undergrad. Like, is it, it, this is wild. If you know anything about, like, the way that sports departments tend to work, obviously FDU is, like, not a large school, not a big athletics program, but they're, and of course I had the link and then I closed out of it, but they're, they were talking about this on the broadcast of the game earlier, their athletic or their basketball SID rather is an undergrad who graduating from high school where he was also an SID for his entire high school career was Beautiful. like a graduating senior walks into the FDU athletic offices and was like, I want to be an SID. Can I be an SID? And now he's the, the sports information <laughs> guy for basketball and several other sports at, at FDU, which is incredible because like, is it, out of the realm of possibility that an undergrad could do this job and be good at it. No, not at all. Yeah. Is it a little bit insane that the university is trusting an undergrad with what is ultimately a very large PR job? Yes. <laughs> Shout out to that guy though. Shout out to that guy. Jordan Smirnoff, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Sure. I found the tweet. Dr. Yes. Smirnoff does a great job at that. I'm sure that's what it, I, I assume that's what his friends call it. <laughs> Kamish, what are some of your favorite favorite, favorite bevels so far in this tournament? So there was a there was a few things which I mean we're doing the bevel bracket which it, it, it's been a lot of fun. So every time a team advances around, we we add a layer of bevel to their logo. So if you've made it to the Sweet Sixteen at this point, you should have had at least two layers of bevel. Uh, there were some teams that had a shot for three layers. Fairly Dickinson was one of those, uh, along with uh, with our our friends at Pitt. Uh, unfortunately, they they did not make it to the the Sweet Sixteen to get the third level of bevel. But this has been kind of fun. There's there's actually one of the followers that is actually doing a bevel bracket, so they're doing the prog progression of the bevels in the bracket, which I I was I believe Jordan was setting up for the Sweet Sixteen, but this person's already doing it, which Love is it. fantastic. Uh, my favorite bevel so far. Uh, there, there's 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 been two, uh, and they're not like like logos. Even though the Princeton logo after the first round, the first bevel was absolutely magnificent. It was like one of the prettiest bevels I've seen. Uh, it's unfair. Also, it's unfair. It was that good. It, it, it was that good. Also, the second level of bevel for Tennessee, like the T logo. I mean, it's just amazing. Like, and it's like shiny on the edges all the way up to like the T. It's 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 beautiful there. Um, the the one that I, I think I liked the most, which was, you know, the after Purdue lost to Fairly Dickinson, there was a picture circulating of them punching a hole in the whiteboard, uh, <laughs> and it's like there's like. <laughs> so I let you know we we celebrated Fairly Dickinson, and I let a day pass before I touched. Uh, attempting to bevel because I got curious. I wanted to see if I could bevel that picture. Uh, and, and I beveled the hole in the whiteboard. It's, it's, it's honestly amazing. It's, it's one of my favorites. People have said it's art. And I really love those replies when they call it art. My favorite replies also are like, this is a nightmare. Uh, so you know, anytime we bevel something and they're like, this is, this, this will haunt my dreams. I like those also because it really, I'm just slapping a filter on it. I mean, there's there's a method to the madness, but we, we need to uh, create that Patreon tier to teach you how to bevel. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> the whiteboard bevel was absolutely the bevel of the tournament so far. So. But there's one that I would say was second um, when Arkansas upset one seed Kansas. Um, <laughs> the Arkansas coach, Eric Musselman, decided yeah, Musselman. to decided to show off his muscles by taking off his shirt and, and twisting it around his head like a helicopter. Uh, <laughs> you can throw in the P.D. Pablo song in here at the same time. I think, I think uh, at Heavens, uh, the Iowa fan did the P.D. Pablo remix of it. So uh, check it, check their stuff out. It's, it's amazing. Um, there's a picture of him just like with his fist up and his shirts in his hand. And it shows the score at the bottom, Arkansas 72, uh, Kansas 71. And I beveled that one. It looks like the whole image is just like frozen in carbonite from like uh, Han Solo. <laughs> it, it's amazing. Uh, I also did a neon filter on that one too, which I kind of like that one a little bit more. But, you know, we're known for the beveling. But that was probably my two favorite bevels so far uh, of the tournament. Shout out to Princeton and, and 
and Tennessee's logo. Those, I think those logos have been my favorite so far. We'll, we'll see what's going on and, and we'll see what will be bubbling soon because I know there's still a couple of games going on right now as we're, we're podcasting. Uh, also shout out to our, 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 our Purdue followers who took, I, 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 I took the punched whiteboard and made the inside transparent and bless our fault. Bless our Purdue followers that immediately put the picture of Purdue Pete busting through a wall <laughs> behind it. Like that was, thank you guys for being like, you know what, this sucks, but at least I'm going to show up where I need to. That made there me happy. Were, there were some Purdue pants posting through it <laughs> right after yes. the game was over. Listen, what was, what was the, uh, was it, it was a boiler uniforms at boiler yes. uniforms. Yep. Shout out to them. I, I feel like they're used to it. Um, they're posting through that shit. It sucks. If you're a Purdue fan, it's, it's brutal. I, I mean, it's just, you know, you think you would maybe have a deep run, uh, since you're a one seed, this field for me, this season, this season, I was just like, there, this is probably like the weakest one line I've ever seen. If we get too in depth of it. And honestly, I have no clue who is going to win the tournament. You know, I mean, we still got two one seeds out there right now. This, this field is just insane. And I'm enjoying every, every single moment of it. It's just a lot of fun. If Houston wins this tournament, I'm going to like, I'm going to laugh. I, I, I will. I will ascend to another le- level if Houston wins it on their bullshit. It's going to be really funny when Houston wins and then the Big 12 claims it as a championship. They're going to. They're going <laughs> to. Absolutely. Guaranteed. The guaranteed. Big 12 guaranteed. If Houston wins it, they are claiming it as a title. I, I, they will already have it mocked up because technically it's, you know, they start football in the same year. It's already, it already counts. I mean, Holgerson's going to claim it. Why not? Exactly. <laughs> Speaking of which... Taking a very, very quick pivot into football, the ostensible topic of this podcast under normal circumstances. Uh, Quote from, where did it go? Where did it go? It was in the Discord. It's it's just, I'll I'll put it in the show notes. Thank you. You got it. I was trying so hard to have a smooth transition and now there's just going to be a bunch of silence for Jordan. No, it's going to be great because I'll edit it all out. Where'd it go? I I just keep posting the Rutgers thing. Okay. Oh, okay. It it's because it collapsed. Okay, I found it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on brand. Incredible. So, anyway, speaking of football, the ostensible topic of this podcast, Dana Holderson, quote, "Ain't no fucking hot seat in my mind." In his typical tactful manner, Houston's head coach responded to persistent hot seat rumors as his program prepares for life in the Big 12. Do you want the whole quote? I'm- it's lower in the article. I did not. Okay, we won 20 games in two years, Holgerson said. We won bowl games in back-to-back years. I have five years on my contract with a fucking impossible buyout. So there ain't no fucking hot seat in my mind. They're just hating. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, There's so I, know, many Beth. I know you miss him, Beth. Yes. Hold on. Let me let me try a Dana Holgerson impression here. All right. I'm going to try this. All right. All right. I, this is not going to be good at all. I, I, I think I've lost it already, but I'm going to try it anyway. It. I was not going to go for it. We won 20 games in two years. We won bowl games in back-to-back years. I have five years on my contract with a fucking impossible buyout. There ain't no fucking hot seat in my mouth. They're just hey. I'm gonna I don't put, know if that's what he sounds I'm gonna like. Put, but, I'm going to sure, put the sound effects of like a, like a riverboat casino behind you. <laughs> I mean, that's where he takes the impossible buyout if he gets it. He's going straight to the casino, right to the roulette table, and betting it all on 69. And when they tell him there's no 69 on the wheel, he says, good! That's the sex number. The idea idea of him taking a cashier's check and just sliding it across a fucking (laughs) roulette table. Do you want chips? No. I'm in the big chips. I want to win chips. Lower the article now, it says I, what we're what, dealing with. What now. we're dealing with now on a day to day basis, we're gonna be last at the Big Twelve. That's just facts. We, we gotta we gotta progress when it comes to that. It takes time. It also takes money for the roulette table. We're not quite there yet. All right, give me, give me dollar nothing on a hard eight. So what, what I'm looking forward to, guys, is I'm gonna transition to our next topic as well, because when Dana does come out at Houston, when things don't go well, I assume that his next football job will be at Princeton. Just because <laughs> that would make me the happiest person alive. Sure, why not? <laughs> Princeton Tigers head coach Dana Holgerson. Oh my god. 
God. <laughs> Can you imagine him in New Jersey? Atlantic City, baby. Sometimes Coach Dana's, New York, New Coach Dana's gonna go to Atlantic. Oh my God. Imagine how Atlantic angry City. drug handles would make him. Oh my God. <laughs> Or I have to turn left to turn right. I'm just imagining that that movie was it um, that Rodney Dangerfield movie Back to School, where he was where he was a, a rich person. Well, he wasn't a rich person, uh, but then he was in a rich person's world. So I, I think that was all Rodney Dangerfield movies. But say that could be a little <laughs> yeah. Rodney Dangerfield movie, <laughs> except, except, except the funny. one where he convinces his kid to dress like a girl. That was the only movie that does not cover that. <laughs> Ladybugs was a cinematic masterpiece. My kid is watching this fucking <laughs> French show now. Slight, slight tangent. My kid is watching this French cartoon now called Miraculous, the story of Ladybug and Cat Noir. It's a cartoon. My daughter's and also watching this Princeton. piece of crap. It's yeah, terrible. And, and it's like, it's somewhere like Sailor Moon, if Tuxedo Mask were less useful because the boy is Cat Noir. And so this like really cute femme, like Bishi boy turns into like this cat, costume and he's got a tail and then gets his ass kicked and then a girl in the ladybug costume saves him and she has a huge crush on him it's it's great guys i love watching i love fucking love watching it sounds disney awful. plus shows with my kid girl so, power you gotta you gotta see what my my son is watching right now he's he's watching something that's that's it's it's a mexican show uh, and it's called dale 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 that looks great uh, it is it is like the pinata master show it's like a cooking show, like you know the the dramatic cooking shows where you have to make like a certain cake or, uh, you know, whatever type of creation. But this is for like people to make certain pinatas, and it's like a horrible English dub. Uh, so really bad dub. It's really bad. It's so it's so ridiculous. And then there's like a name of like one of the dinosaurs. It's it's incredible, and it's just like that's the name is Dale Dale Dale. I'm I'm. I swear, if you said that three times, you you know, Pitbull would pop out. Yep. I'm about to say that. Let's have that. Dale. Mr. My, my daughter also watches that, but thinks it's called Pinata Masters, actually. Same, same, hey, thing. same thing. Yeah, same close enough. That's what it is. That's what it should be uh, called, to be fair. I guess I have to give credit to old Nassau, the boys at Prince, the boys and girls at Princeton. Absolutely tearing it through things. Princeton basketball is a thing since... 19 oh whatever they started in and i guess they're i guess they're glad they're getting their due now long stories prison basketball has never been bad they've actually been pretty good historically in the ivy league uh this is just interesting because they were so low usually the ivies don't get the 15 line in the tournament that just doesn't usually they're a little higher 13 14 even as high as 12 one year i think yale had so it's not it's more that it was a surprise that they were that low. They didn't play. It wasn't a great year for the Ivy League anyways. Never actually is. But good for them. They won something. My one nice thing I could say about them was that best drunk hoagie I've ever had was at Hoagie Haven in Princeton, New Jersey. I was drunk there. It was wonderful. And the couple, the one time I got thrown out of an eating club for stealing something, they actually just asked me to leave and not forcibly beat the shit out of me and throw me out, which they were every, like they had every intent, like they could have done that would have been fine. Then again, we also did show up with a giant cooler of band punch and we're expecting like a Friday night to like have a big party at this eating club on their nice wooden floors and nice wooden tables. And they looked at us like we were fucking heathens. That is a very Dartmouth thing to do. We definitely showed up. Okay. So that's a long drive. It's it, think, think of Hanover to, to Princeton. Mm -hmm. So we got drunk at least three times in that <laughs> trip. <laughs> so when we came... We were, when we were all off the bus, we were, that was the third drunk we had that day. And so it was, it was not a gentle drunk. It was, it was the, it was the angry drunk of like, uh, and of course this was, I want to also remind you that this was like before people had Bluetooth speakers or whatever. So it, on our, on our band bus, it was just someone with a jam box and enough D batteries to like make it work for that many hours <laughs> and hopefully CDs that didn't skip. And so we'd been playing like man paradise for the dashboard light had been played at least five or six times at that point and i had been leading it so when we came off the bus it was i was in fine form we were also taken to this uh my best friend who was drum major i was conductor which were two different jobs because the drum major's job was to keep everyone drunk and the drum conductor's job was to actually do music things and the band president right. the three of us the three of us were all really good friends and so when we got there we always stayed in the dorms with the other band members and we found this poor, unassuming freshman that was like, I'll host three people. We're like, oh, we're going to go with her. 
and she had her dorm was in a place called the nunnery because apparently because apparently there was a all girls part of the dorm at in princeton and in the middle of the night there was a fire alarm and so she rolls out into the commons with all these other women and then she also has with her another woman and two guys no one knows in pajamas as well <laughs> and so we're out there and we're like draping our arms around her being like hey it's been a great this has been so much fun thank you so much and she is like oh, melting God. dying as an 18 year old woman at princeton so oh. i don't remember her name her no i don't remember her name her name is alma shout out to alma she she dealt with us <laughs> good times for everyone uh okay what else we got the uva yeet i don't know this one what was oh this oh my god so oh, this is man. how they lost to uh Furman. they were inbounding the ball they had a timeout instead of taking said timeout while being double teamed their fifth or sixth year senior can't keep track at this point he's been in the program for a very long time pa clark just kind of threw it up to midcourt expecting someone from his team to catch it Folks, someone from Furman caught it, passed it to his teammate, hit the three, and Furman won. So Hell yeah. I don't really know what that was. And it seems like UVA may be cursed other than their championship year because they also yeah. keep losing to lower seated teams I'll like Purdue does. I threw the video was, in there if you want to play it. Um, uh, yeah, let I, me. Uh, let, let me I, uh, yeah, if you haven't I seen it, you the, should watch the it. UVA, the UVA Yeet. Oh, by the way, thank you, by the way, for dubbing it that because we're now big enough that if I just search Google for shit that we've said, it comes up first. So if you Google UVA Yeet, this is what comes up first. So thank you. <laughs> Hell yeah. Once That's again, you know what the fuck it. are we doing, people? I, I, I'm just going to say SEO, this. We, apparently. We, we got, we got a, a, um, one of our tweets like jacked by a, a furniture company. Uh, a furniture sports company. I saw that today. too, and uh, I've, I've, I, that just shows to us that I guess we've made it, Mama. We've made it. They're, uh, they're stealing our tweets now. Here's our. I just here's took our a UV video. Eat. Yeah, if everybody wants to. Important thing. Live react. Get it in cleanly. Handle the initial trap that you. He did not handle the initial trap. And then make free throws if you force them to foul. And the Cavaliers are playing with four guards, and the four guards out there, along with Shedrick, are their best free throw shooters. <laughs> oh, oh, no. No. oh my gosh! He threw it away. Pin, Pickies. What the fuck do you? How? So oh, I. Man, you were asking for that. So I, I had, I had my infant that just went down when that happened. So I like ran around my house as quiet as possible to not wake the baby. When that happened, Folks, I was like, oh, oh no, oh no. I was freaking out on the inside. Like I just could not, I could not like appropriately react. And, like I would have woken up the baby and it had been crying and it had not been good. But I, I can't believe he threw it. I, I don't know what he saw. And then, then I realized after the play, they had a timeout. I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. He could have just yeah, called that, timeout. He could have called timeout. That one was on Tony Bennett. He could have, the coach could have called timeout. Yes. Like, they, I actually heard the announcer trying to excuse it by claiming that maybe Kihei just thought he could throw the ball so far down the court that time would expire before anyone touched it. No. Um, no. Which is not a thing. Um, no. I, but it's a really hilarious excuse and idea for what was trying to happen. Well, my thought is that he thought his big man would be at center court, but folks, the Furman guy was at center court and, uh, you know, <laughs> that's how you lose as a four seed to a 13 seed. Furman also played very and well. It usually, you can tell who your teammates are by the color of their uniforms, but apparently that was, yes, he not was in play here. wearing purple again. I don't know what, I think there was a video after that where it was a Furman player that he was walking back. He was like, he just threw it up. Oh yeah. No, when he, like, when he's walking, walking into the locker room, walking I saw that one. Room. And then he was like, he just threw it. I don't know what happened. He just threw it. <laughs> okay. So now, yeah. now we got to talk about what pit basketball did in the last two days. Hey. All right. First of all, I want to settle a, an issue here. Who tweeted the, the wacky waving inflatable arm thing? And then you know didn't give pit girl credit. It was not for me. I didn't. Right. It was not me. I wait, was, do you it mean? Must have been beard. From, wait, like, do you the, mean the, I the DS? I did not have keys to the basketball account. The, the no, Diaz I, is, I wrote, Grams is, is I wrote the Diaz Grams are basically if the inflatable tube Ben were basketball players and brothers Sorry. and played in the ACC. You're gonna get sued. And then I was. You're gonna get sued. And for then content. I was. And then I was wondering if it was Diaz Grams or Diaz's Gram. I wasn't sure. Yeah, because we have Guillermo and, and uh and Jorge. 
and hopefully he becomes a good three-point shooter so we can call him three armo begging for that <laughs> i like, Desperate for I like that. that a lot I like Desperate that. for that That's does that good. does that make up for lacking credit three, you should quote tweet it and say credit me <laughs> she kind of did get in the replies there I, good. I was, someone snitch tagged you to be fair um, That's that good. was funny that's good i'm but, glad that happened for the record for the listeners i have been calling them wacky wavy waving inflatable tube guys since january she has the receipts because i've been perceiving pit basketball all season i was at the uh the games in uh in the barclay center and i was like who are these guys this is awesome and that was when <laughs> they weren't playing that, like, they didn't last year play we had chet holmgren oh so last year we had chet holmgren who was the original wavy tube guy and now we have two of them at the same school i just wonder if we're going to have four next year um <laughs> and they're just going to take over the sport these incredibly skinny long-armed man children i don't know as someone who is a less skinny long-armed man child i also i always like to see representatives of my people the diaz's <laughs> gram are good noodles and i will fight anyone who does not I will, I, I will acknowledge say... their good noodleness they, they 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 did give you some energy in that Iowa State game. There was some. It was funny when they were running the pick and roll. It was like the twins <laughs> running the pick and roll, and I was like, uh, the announcers were getting it messed up. I was like, <laughs> who had the foul? And then the the best part was when one of them got fouled. They went to the bench, thought they they got subbed, but they were the ones that had to shoot the free throw. <laughs> I think it was 31 was the one that got fouled. 25 was the one that was being subbed. 31 went to the bench. And then the coach was like, no, no, you shoot the free throw. They got yeah. themselves mixed up. There is, a, there is a quick little cheat sheet for this, though, which is that Jorge is 31, and you, they're in alphabetical and numerical order. Also, Jorge wears yellow shoes. Um, <laughs> this otherwise... that someone posted is great. <laughs> oh, it's great. <laughs> Oh my god, I haven't seen that. Oh my god. <laughs> it's great. I am Jesus. saving that for next season. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> yep. I don't I'm know. Crying. I missed I that the first time. <laughs> we, we are going to have to talk this about the crime against humanity the that was. Same time. There's two of them. We're going to have to talk about the crime against humanity that was Iowa State Pitt. I thought it was great. I had a great time. Do we yeah. have to talk about the Mississippi State miss shot? Oh, the poor guy. Oh, God. Uh, that game uh, was also low-key a crime against uh, basketball. I thought we'd talk about that last... We, we did last... We did talk about that one. But we did talk about okay. Mississippi State shot before. Oh, last, so last, last podcast, so we don't uh, need to rehash that. Sorry, the, Mississippi State fans. The, so how many, how many threes did Iowa State hit in the whole game? Not, not very many. many. That's Iowa it. State was two of twenty-one from three, <laughs> for an astonishing nine point five percent three-point percentage. <laughs> they were fourteen of sixty from the field. I yeah, love, I, I I love Big Twelve. You know that emotionally, I'm with you guys a lot of the time. Okay, that's my secret allegiance. But they if you're going to be this weekend and going like, "Hey guys, we're the we're the basketball conference," fuck yeah. But then you can't let Iowa State get a six seed and then, you know, do that. How'd that go for Kansas, well, by the way? I, you know what? <laughs> yep. Super good. Perfect. No notes. Yes. So Rock chop Jayhawks while I'm hearing. Pitt also made only 14 baskets in that game. Yes. It just happens that Pitt made six threes, which gave them more points. But, yes. like, neither team could shoot at all in this game. No. 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 Jamarius Burton has not did not play well throughout the entire tournament and that was part of the problem today that was also part of why Iowa State got back into it after being down something like 22 to 2 in the first half of the game they didn't have a field goal for like I want to say like 10 and a half or 11 minutes at the beginning oh, yeah. of the I'm, game I'm going to drop I'm going to drop the game flow chart real fast um, and it was very, very funny, push. though, because Pitt fans were like, okay, this is good. I'm feeling good. And then they started scoring. They started making shots from the field, and we were all like, oh, no, no. Wow, that's hard. <laughs> I, do, I don't think – I really like in college football, I really love like the win percentage chances, but it's a little more abstract than this. 
basketball has the beauty of the game flow thing where you can just look at this thing and go, oh, they just stopped scoring. Mm -hmm. Something fundamentally broke for about six minutes there where mm -hmm. Iowa State just forgot how to play basketball. And unlike any other sport, when you forget to play how to play basketball, things get oh, real no. bad real fast. Hey, you hold on. Let's them. stop. Let's stop no. all of this no. before we talk about any of this. There was an issue with the rim. Yes, the game. <laughs> there was. There was. <laughs> There was an issue with the rim before the game. And so I saw them. They had a ladder. They had multiple wrenches. A lever. And they were on the, the they were trying to figure out if it was level. I mean, this was like almost like a 40 minute delay. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. All right. I would have so it off I, if they had So I not. tweeted. So I tweeted, I was like, okay, they've been messing with this one rim. So feel free to use this as an excuse if you're the one shooting on the rim in the first half. Uh, Iowa State got the rim in the first half, <laughs> and Iowa State really never recovered. Pitt, I don't know how how they survived, but you know the 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 DS's grandmas were so close to the rim they could just just drop it in there. So, mm -hmm. and, and yet I mean, Iowa State had more points in the first half. Like that's the thing they had the rim <laughs> excuse, and they got twenty three in the first half, but they only got eighteen points in the second half. Yeah, it, does, it didn't work out. The the excuse was. There was much ado made during the Xavier game today of how Pitt held Iowa State to 42 points on Friday and why were we letting Xavier score all these points. Iowa State held themselves to 42 points. <laughs> can I can I mention real fast how much I love these? Are, is it Xavier or Xavier? I don't Xavier. know. It's Xavier. Whatever. Xavier. How, how much are our dear Musketeers, not number one Musketeers in my heart, shout out to the pair of Musketeers. Two per un, un pour deux, un pour two, whatever they're 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 saying is all for all, one and one for all. Mwah. Love you, Paris. They my, one of my favorite parts of March Madness is when they start having mascots on soap operas. Yes. Last well, year, per, last, last year Purdue Pete yeah. is great. Purdue Pete coming in year. like doing the doing the work, but this year <laughs> the Xavier Blob showing up as like, <laughs> are you here oh, with this, him? They they did. They did Xavier last year too. Oh, was that Xavier last year too? Yeah, so I, I did Shit. still have like a saved yes, haha, -ha, yes of the blob at the window. I still had that. In <laughs> oh, my I phone. thought that was from this year. Shit. Very, no, it wasn't, but it, it's a great rehash for them to replay it because they probably were going to use the Purdue meme that we use from him going out of the door and stuff. Uh, but, you know, since Purdue did not uh, fare well against Fairly Dickinson. Hey, yo. So, hey, yo. Oof. I've um, made so many bad puns for that, but fairly Dickinson earned it. While we're talking about the blob, I do want to take this moment to appreciate like the mellows and the tubas and various other members of the Xavier basketball band that decorated their instruments to be very blob like. Ten great, out of yeah. ten. That was really horrifying, Excellent but also spirit. cool. The the Xavier fans were really upset at us when we were like cheering for Kennesaw State uh to, to defeat them in the first round. They're like, don't don't go back now and post the bevel of Xavier. I'm like, that you win, you get the bevel. That's what it is. Like, of course we're rooting for a 14 seed. We want chaos. We're sickos. Come on, man. <laughs> it's in the name. It's in our soul. I, th that's literally literally from March Madness. What do we want? Except the upset. Like that's, that's, that's what. But then like that's what everyone we wants want the madness. upset too. We want that madness. Your team. Okay. Uh, Texas A and M. Texas A and M had some problems with Penn State. Penn State came out and just absolutely took it to them. I had way too much fun making was... Funky Town jokes the whole season. Oh, my God. Okay, they were way really funny, though, so fun. it's okay. I didn't know about the booty ball part of this. <laughs> oh. I I, and just... then, like, I found out about booty ball, and then I was like, I was excited to use it, but then they lost to Texas. I was like, oh, come on, man. <laughs> yeah. for, for those who don't know, Illinois is very angry – underachieving coach Brad Underwood after getting knocked out of the Big Ten tournament by Illinois groused that they were just using booty ball to beat them <sighs> and Penn State immediately <laughs> embraced this especially in the fan base but even the players I think posted some peach emojis so uh, they, it, booty ball I mean, was an amazing phenomenon I'm very sad that they couldn't quite make it back against the Longhorns, even though I enjoy Texas. Who, who wouldn't want to embrace the booty ball? But yes. I just, the, the funk thing is very funny to me because that is not, it's, it's, it's not a super common last name, but it's not an uncommon last name in my corner of central PA. And I, yep. 
never really thought about like making all of the jokes out of funk until it happened on Thursday, and I was just like, "Huh, okay." I'd be I mean, honest I'm, with everybody. I had, I had. It comes from a player at Maryland in football that was named Jake Funk, and I would always say, "Oh, bring the funk!" when he would get a carry, and uh, hmm. and we we just kind of poured it over I'm, to. I'm older. Andrew funk. I'm older than you, so it it goes back to like a mediocre golfer on the PGA Tour. His name was Fred Funk. Uh, and he had a funky swing. Uh, he had some weird backswing, and his name was Fred Funk. And I think like he would be in contention, but that was the first funk I think I've, I I came across. But yeah, I had so many like funk uh, puns. I had you know bringing the noise, bringing the funk. Uh, you know, of course, somebody said like one of his highlights, the Funky Town. I was like, <laughs> it was amazing. But thank thank you, Penn State, and and y'all better sign your coach before Georgetown steals him. <laughs> I mean, or, or not. Also, pleased to inform you that Andrew Funk is from Warrington Township, PA, which is not exactly where I expected him to be from, but still an area where one might expect to find a funk. Mm -hmm. uh, it is derived from the Middle High German Funke, which means spark. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Super German. It's most likely uh, used to denote a blacksmith. Which possibly suggests that Tobias Funke is a distant cousin of Penn State sharpshooter. Thank you. And Christian that's, Fuchs. that's where I was going. That's where I was going with that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Auburn. Hey, Pink Girl, do you want to speak on Auburn too, since that's your other? <sighs> I, I'm not <laughs> nearly as invested in Auburn basketball as I am in, uh, in pit basketball or as I have historically been in Auburn football until recent hiring decisions had been made. But that was really frustrating to watch. <laughs> um, really? You yeah. don't say. Really, really, really frustrating to just watch Auburn blow it. Good and cool. Thanks, guys. What if you made your free throws? <laughs> now, I'm going to argue, what if you didn't? What if What if we just didn't? What if free throws were just vibes? I mean, I mean we I saw think what happened. We know, yeah, we know, we what, know happens, what happens. <laughs> which is that a 10-point lead turns into a 17-point loss and a half. And there was that magical moment yesterday where it was like, maybe no one seeds will get through. And then, oh, that is not. Somebody what had to tweet that. Who tweeted that? I am mad at them. I assumed it was you, Kamesh. It was not me. No, I was upset. That oh. seems like that seems like some, that seems like like cursed shit. You'd say. Sometime. No, I I didn't want to say that because my my five year old picked no seeds to go to the no one seeds to go to the Sweet Sixteen, and so I was like I was silently rooting for this the entire time. Kids on to something, and I didn't want to say anything. So whoever said it. I was just like, oh, how dare you put that thinking sicko's face out there? Oh, no. Oh, speaking of kid picks, my daughter picked correctly both Fairleigh Dickinson and Princeton. Hell yeah. Her, enti her entire final four is done and basically was after Friday, but she correctly picked the two biggest upsets of the tournament. She Strong Jersey picked... energy. I like that. Strong Jersey energy from the from the Yeah. She, she had picked uh, Louisiana Lafayette to win the whole thing because they'd been studying Louis Armstrong lately. You mean, Honestly, you mean, these are not worse reasons to pick than I use. So, that's... you mean you mean Louisiana, <laughs> like that abbreviation? Lysinia. Louisiana. I had to get in. I had to get in a raging Cajun dig at them because they wanted to be called Louisiana. That's your abbreviation now. You could have just been UL laugh. Uh, you'd have been fine. But no, you, you get Louisiana. Louisiana. We're gonna do this nonstop for next year. I'm pretty sure. This is now Louisiana. L, L Sienna. The Sienna? <laughs> yeah, make it real French. Luciana. Luciana? Luciana. Yeah. Just just like the girl that turns into a ladybug and her boy that turns into a cat. It's very <laughs> French. Noir. Did I say that, that it takes place in Paris? It takes place in Paris. Terrible. Do they call it Paris? Oh, no, it, but, but but she has Paris. a very Valley Girls accent. It reminds me of do you guys ever watch the show Totally Spies? We oh talked God, about that's this on this show already. Okay, we did. That's right. It reminds what? me of a, of a less of a less fetishy version of Totally Spies. Because <laughs> that show was weird. Yeah, Houston's going to continue on their bullshit. I'm afraid they're going to take this bullshit all the way to the title. Like, if I had to put my money on something right now, it's that Houston's going to bullshit their way to the title. And I'm just going to laugh. Just feels stopping. like just feels like Kelvin Sampson's way that they'll win. Yeah. Well, they they play Miami next, right? Yes. Because Miami just beat the Hoosiers. Breaking news. That's right. Miami just beat Spoil the Hoosiers. Spoiler alert in case you listen to this two days from now and haven't checked the score. Two scores. days from now, you know, look at that. It um, was not know. close. Sorry, Indiana fans. Well, I mean, Indiana did have a nice score of 69. 
Ayo. But uh, the problem was Miami had 85. Oh. When do they, when are the next games on? Because if I click on ESPN, they say they're Thursday. on Thursday. Okay, they say they're on Thursday, March 23rd, which I don't – wait, hold up. No, that's Thursday, Friday, a, and then Saturday, Yeah, Sunday. Thursday, March 23rd is not a day. Okay, it also says that Wednesday, March 22nd is a day. So This is great. No, that's, that's a day, but there's – Those are correct. Oh. Hmm? So it was Wednesday, yep. Thursday. Okay. Days are real, unfortunately. Cool. Anyway, Words darn. are not, but days are real. Darn. So that's going to be fun. <laughs> Let's do a little, uh, a little knit news as well. <laughs> Michigan, what the fuck did you do? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> please, <laughs> please take us home. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead, doctor. <sighs> I, 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 Let him I cook. talk about this. So for those who had the privilege of not following Michigan's basketball this season, first of all, I envy you tremendously. God bless they, you. Congratulations. The most mediocre basketball team possible. I think their final record was 17 and 16. And they lost 12 one score games or so, 12, like less than five point differential games. So like very, very winnable games. They just made an art out of blowing them including giving up a four-point play to go to overtime at Iowa with, like, five seconds to go, all kinds of things. But uh, after just failing to play basketball against Rutgers, I think they scored what, two field goals in the whole second half of that game. They crashed out, wound up a three-seed in the NIT, won comfortably against Toledo to start, and then, there you go. then they uh, had to go at Vandy, and because Clemson, the one seed in their region, had lost, the winner of that game was guaranteed to host a home game in whatever the NIT's sicko version of the Elite Eight is. And the broadcast of the Vandy Michigan game was bizarre. They, they only had one camera, and it was on the wrong side of the court. So the scorer's table and the coaches were like <laughs> in the foreground, and it was just shooting the back of Juwan Howard's head and Jerry Stackhouse's head. <laughs> And occasionally they would turn around and make a face. And that was the only time you got to see the coaches' faces. Early, like four minutes in, it went to a test pattern screen for like <laughs> two minutes. It was incredible. Uh, that Michigan reminds went... me of the, the CBI thing, too. Uh, yeah, but... where he was counting down. Yeah, so the CBI, which is the college basketball invitation. Oh, sorry to jump in this real quick. But the shot clocks broke in the CBI in Daytona Beach. Uh, the PA announcer had to verbally say it over the P PA. <laughs> he had to go like twenty nine, like, twenty six, twenty five, twenty four. Oh I think we have the tweet on the on the, on the timeline. But you can continue with the NIT. Can the guy right in row sixteen all, please shut up? I'm CBI counting line. down the top clock. <laughs> <laughs> Your, your Honda Accord is still has its lights on. <laughs> Seventeen, sixteen. Ignition. Um. So, uh, game had major swings. Like Vandy was up by like fifteen six minutes into the game, but then Michigan really seized control in the second half. And the in fact they were up eight with fifty eight seconds left. And then, and their win probability on ESPN was all the way up to 97%. Oh, no. And then they put their whole ass into losing that game. Like, <laughs> they had to work at it. It's the kind of loss where you think, well, there have to have been, like, a lot of missed free throws. No. Michigan did not take a single free throw in the final minute of the game. And, in fact, they only managed one shot. But they had three consecutive turnovers, all of which involved the same player, who apparently has catcher's mitts for hands. And <laughs> it, it was the like, worst they just, break I've ever seen in my life. It was unbelievable. Like, the UVA yeet was a better idea than most of what Michigan was trying <laughs> yes, it was. against the Vandy press. It was. Um, it wasn't even a good and, press. It was just horrendous. Passing. No, Vandy was not trying hard. I want to be clear. This wasn't like Vanderbilt <laughs> dug deep and found something that wasn't there and just got on. No, it was like Michigan was dramatically trying to end their season and they just barely succeeded. They also <laughs> were down a bunch of players and started uh, a freshman from Europe. I can't even remember what country he's from, but his first name is Yo-Yo. And uh, <laughs> Yo-Yo started in place of lottery pick Jet Howard. So, yeah, it was... Uh, a really fitting and incredibly stupid end to one of the most miserable seasons of basketball you will ever encounter. Such aggressive mediocrity. Yo-Yo is Lebanese. Yeah, but he's playing That's in right. Yeah. On the plus side, you're free. I am. 
I am. But the, now there's nothing. There's just the rest of the upsets, which is good. Oh. That's that's what the committee's for. So, like, when, when your teams are done, now you get to have fun. Yep. And just, uh, you know, what, what, do, what do you call it, Jordan? Like, it, there's a word for what we are as a committee. Like, you know, it's, it's um, we kind of soothe the, the soul, and I, and I cannot find the word right now. Um, I, I, know I, I really mean. don't I can't remember it either. Yeah. Yeah. A, a, a uh, balm for the yeah, soothing there's, fans. There's a, a sicko's balm. Yes, that could be one of our Discord tiers or whatever the the Patreon tiers. <laughs> we'll get, we'll Sicko's bomb labeled chapstick. The Sicko's chapstick. It, it makes your lips go yes, haha, yes. Uh, but do not. Sounds painful. Hey, hey listeners, <laughs> no. if you get something in the mail from us, please do not put it on your body in any way. I'm not sure if it's been tested anywhere. Do not ingest it. Do not ingest. Yeah, it's not on, out. not in, like nowhere. So Listen to the shampoo weird. bottle, external use only. <laughs> Even then, I'm not sure. But fuck, but fuck that shit. Do not rinse and repeat. All right. Uh. Sickos committee not tested on animals. Definitely tested on followers. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh god. As as some Big Ten fans on here, are we all excited to get UCLA in your corner next year? Is this going to make things better for y'all? Define like, better. More fun, I guess. The Northwestern UCLA game was also quite distressing. It was it was just just distressing. It was the word. Yeah, it was not good. Yeah. Uh, Andrew, uh, is it weird to fold in your third fandom into the Big Ten again? Yeah. I, I at least now I only have to follow one conference. <laughs> You're just folding all of your fandoms. At some point, they're all going to be in the same fucking conference. And it's on a channel that it's possible to get, so that will help, that is I no, assume. That is nice. Yes. Thankfully, I do get packed. But you can't network, watch it on yes. your fridge anymore. I can make, I can figure that out. You can run Doom on your fridge. I can put the fucking Big Ten Network <laughs> on your fridge. Do you want to declare a new fandom just so that we can scoop con- the next conference realignment? I know. Like, I mean, yeah, you need to go me... to school for, like, I mean, w- so, Andrew, let's, let's lay out your fandoms real quick. Uh-huh. So, you got... You got the Michigan, the Ohio undergrad. State, and then you have the UCLA. Yeah, yeah, because I went did Michigan undergrad, UCLA masters, and Ohio State for my doctorate. So I have three. Give me, a, give me some post grad work, Andrew. Come on, I need some post grad. So yeah, I'll let. You, as soon as I get my post doc, like, I'll let you know. Can you get like a double major undergrad somewhere where you just basically just have to take a class, and you get like well, a post doc counts easiest... as like being an employee of the school, so. Andrew, okay. that's what you, Andrew. What you need is more education. This is what we've all decided here. <laughs> Sorry, congrats. Right. You, Thanks congrats. for supporting you more me. years of school. And you can possibly go to one of your previous alma mater. You can't. No. No. I mean, I'll have to go know, somewhere else. ULM offers a very, a very affordable online MBA. I, I'm sure they. I'm, I'm sure they do. <laughs> no, I have to stay in the Big Ten, or I have to go to a school that's going to join the Big Ten. So that's why I can here. I can. Couldn't, totally couldn't join the Big Ten. Where's your, I can, where's your I can Chicago degree? <laughs> you should go to Hawaii. I would love to add Hawaii to the Big Ten. Get all the time zones. So would all I. the time zones. Let's I mean, go. We'll get you some money at Teal, and we're going to cause some problems. Uh-huh. I, was, I was thinking West Virginia, future Big Ten member. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Oh, that would be great. <laughs> oh when, when your cousins come down from the, the cousins you don't know come down from the mountain, you're like, uh-oh. I haven't we talked to, to these do, cousins in a long fucking time. We need to do the Sickos Realignment Conference, but like, like just do that like for real. And like, this is what we want. Hawaii, and, uh, Boston College, about... Rice, you know. No, no, I'm talking about like, when we do it, it's absolutely serious and they don't realize that it's serious. So it's just like the opposite. Mm. You know, they, mm. they expect it to be Sickos and like, well, wow, this actually makes sense. What? Wait, who are you guys? <laughs> The most sickos thing is a thing of all. Putting doing the thing that makes Pitt sense in the same conference. That's always again. the way it is. What? No way. The way it is. How could we ever do Done. that? It's basically, bring back the Big East. I think that's. I think that's slowly but surely what we're like coalescing towards as a podcast and as a fandom is that we're coming like we're coalescing back towards bringing back the Big East. R- I, I will say. I will and say the, the Big East is like my favorite basketball conference. I, I love that like big basketball conference. Same like, South Florida uh, was a was a mainstay of all my fucking Big East you know fandom for so long. I don't know. I, just, I love the hatred between UConn and Providence because God, it's, so it, funny. it's ridiculous. It is so fucking funny. It is so funny. It's just like Providence and UConn they hate each other and they're these two little tiny states 
that just hate the shit, hate the, hate the crap out of each other, and I love it so goddamn much. Same. It's so amazing. Uh, DePaul, 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 and South Florida hate. I mean, that that got me uh, through so many fucking Big East brackets back in my day. I actually got when I went to the UConn game, I oh, wore this hoodie and I got a, more comments on that than I would have expected as someone who was not a conscious basketball watcher. Were um, they negative? When Pitt was in the Big East. Wait, wait, were, they, were, they, like, were they like negative, positive? How do they approach Yeah, you? no, like uh, we were walking around. My dad was, I was actually, it was warm enough at the beginning. I was wearing my like internet's only college football podcast t-shirt and didn't have my hoodie on yet, but my dad was wearing a Pitt hoodie. And like, there was a cop that was acting as a crossing guard who was like, oh, Pitt. And like, there were several other people who said something like that. And I was like, I, they, I as a they Pitt all... fan, literally never think about you, but okay. <laughs> Did, did did they all try to like imitate the the Kemba Walker step back in front of you, like just to just to <laughs> yeah. you? like the crossing the crossing guard just like went in front of you and then just went backwards and then just to <laughs> taunt you from the Big East championship. <laughs> that's what that's what I'm imagining in my head here. That'd be amazing. I'm just mad Sorry. forever that Big 12 realignment denied us the opportunity to have mega jumbo Big East that featured Boise State and TCU. And Seriously. that is what we really need it to never, restore. It never happened, and God, it needed to. The map was so glorious. Mecca East. And little did we know how, like, how not stupid that would be in, like, 10 years. Right. <laughs> like, we look at that, we're like, oh, that's fucking stupid. Now we're like, well, yes, UCLA can play water polo games out in Rutgers. It's fine. I don't know if Rutgers has a water polo team. Like Boise to Tampa is much shorter than LA to Piscataway. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, I I have not been following the women's tournament. Uh, uh, Florida Gulf Coast is doing very well. So they they are the is is Florida Gulf Coast like maybe like I would say the women's baby Gonzaga a little bit like in the infancy like many many years ago. Yes, they were thirty two and three. And they were a 12 seed, which is just horrendous seeding. Like, Seriously? what are we doing Holy here? Shit. Like, why, what? why would you do that? Um, and they want, and so they were in the Villanova region. So they played the five seed Washington State, who won the Pac-12 tournament and beat Stan, uh, beat UCLA and beat Utah, but they lost to FGCU, who shot an amazing doing three that we posted on the on the on the uh, Twitter, where it bounced off the hoop twice hit the top of the backboard and then went in it was incredible unfortunately they lost to villanova who has one of the best players in the country maddie segrist but yeah they were extremely underseated and I'm, I'm mad about it honestly and um we talked about princeton briefly we got jordan's escapades but princeton won um and they they're the last play that they ran to win the game to hit the three to take the lead when they didn't need a three but they took a three to win because winners winners win um, the play that they ran for it was awesome. So everybody should go watch that if they can. So that was the so, main. So you're saying, so you're saying that Princeton did not need a three here. No, but they took one and they won on it. So they did okay, need a three. Right. I don't know. <laughs> That's all my big. I, I love way. those two. It's, it's all me. It's always me. It is my great. It's a great. That more that. points are better than fewer points. Yeah. How's that? What? It's always the line me. between yeah. need and want is a vague one. <laughs> Ultimately, <laughs> my when it comes to hitting a three, those two things. Maybe you don't need a, two, a three, but you would really like one. I don't know the difference between those two things. <laughs> I think my favorite one from this weekend was: Does USC need a ten here? <laughs> <laughs> Which was clearly me because fuck USC, but you know. oh yeah, because you're a UCLA hater, <laughs> and then you know the. <laughs> There's another nice thing one. this weekend nice that we one. haven't talked about yet that I really want to talk about. Um, talk about it. And we, we, we almost got there when we talked about, we know that the Iowa State rim was level yes. because yes. In, the, in the Kentucky game afterwards, there was a sitter. And that is the most amazing <laughs> thing that I have ever seen. Um, the free throw. Yeah. yeah free throw yep. goes around and halfway around again and then just sits on the, yep. top, of the, on the top of the rim which I've never seen before in my life and probably never will again. We got a report from The Athletic, Nicole Auerbach. Um, she said that wasn't the rim that they were working on. It was the other rim. Oh. We, we may have had to retract that tweet, but I didn't. I just think I just replied underneath it. How did, they, how did they play uh, a whole damn ACC like a, tournament in that building and then realize, oh, 
these rims are not level. Well, they had them. They had them set up to Duke specifications. <laughs> oh. How did that go for them against Tennessee? Ooh, Jim Beheim tried to warn us about Greensboro. That's right. He said evils. Jim Beheim. This is a uh, Wake uh, Forest <laughs> plot. No, Greensboro is the only thing that Jim Beheim is correct about. <laughs> it is kind of. I, I love Greensboro just because it makes absolutely no sense to be there, and I love that. And then like the old school wrestler shouting out Greensboro, North Carolina, as me thinking it was a big town when I was growing up. Shout out Ric Flair. Um, <laughs> he's, you know, woo! Like he would, he would always shout out Greensboro, North Carolina. So I thought that was one of the biggest cities of all time. And, you know, I'm old as shit. So we didn't have internet back then. So I grew up, you know, thinking Greensboro was, was a New big York, town. Chicago, LA, in North Carolina. Greensboro. <laughs> <laughs> in New York. LA and Greensboro, North Carolina. You know, he would just say that. And so the ACC tournament was there. I was like, oh, I mean, it's got to be a big me. city, you know. <laughs> Who was your first geography teacher? Ric Flair. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just love that Greensboro seems to be the one city that's like, we'll just build an arena and then instantly it'll put us on the map. And it actually <laughs> worked. Where like 99% it, it of the time, that's just going to be economic disaster. But it, they played it perfectly not in worry. Greensboro. Did not work for the Trop in Tampa, to be fair. No. But it did work I mean, in this case. Also, to be fair, it was the Trop. Yes. <laughs> Although the catwalks are A beautiful, beautiful building full of memories and wonder. And mold. Oh, good stuff. That's also, actually how the IOC keeps getting Olympics. They're like, you could be like Greensboro. You that's could. what it is. This could be you. <laughs> hey, hey, Qatar, do you want the World Cup? You could be like Greensboro, North Carolina. <laughs> I also want to highlight real quick that Greensboro was not the only place with like interesting rim things happening because one of the other locations it was Des Moines. Des Moines had like four wedgies. Yes, it was incredible. on Thursday. One, what was the one wedgie that was? It was shot from the one side and it wedged on the other. <laughs> so what? I don't know how that happened. Like he went over the rim and it wedged on the other side. Like I don't know how. You know, I'm not physics. We don't have blue on here as the physics. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know how that happens. It went over the rim from the other side. She was shot from the other side, and it got wedged on the. I have no idea how. I, that's a, that's a one in a million shot, Doc. So what's really funny is they're going to big cities for the next round, but like the sites for the opening rounds this year were really wild. Like obviously we had Greensboro, we had Des Moines, uh, but we also had Birmingham. Orlando, Sacramento, Albany, Columbus, and Denver. And I have to feel like someone in Denver right now is like, wait a minute, is that the tier of city we are? I thought we were there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have an oh, NFL shit. team, guys. We, got to add we have NBA, NFL baseball, team. hockey. I feel we like, have all four sports. Why are we with these I guys? Like, Why are we with I feel Albany? Like they, just, they were all just like uh, the Southwest fly there. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have it there because I promise you, Southwest does fly to Albany. I've 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 actually done that. Oh man, <laughs> they fly to Albany when I go to Lake George. Shout out, Bo I live Bo in Bo New York, and I've never been to Albany. Why have you been? Albany to Albany? Is would you, like why would you have inconvenient? I have been. I have been to the Albany bus port once to pick up someone. I've been to Albany. My my, we would do this trip um, in the summer. We would always go to Lake George, New York. And we'd fly from either New Orleans or when I was here in San Antonio, we'd fly either from New Orleans to Baltimore and then hop Baltimore to Albany and then go there. And then we would hit Saratoga Springs, which is like right around Albany. Uh, My dad's a big horse racing guy. uh, And we would always go check that out. And it it was a lot of fun. And the airport was really nice. I mean, it's, it's like 12 gates. It's not like, you know, as tiny as Monroe, Louisiana, with the three gates and only one operational, but uh, you know, really, it's it's a nice little airport. It's fun. They have they have you know, there was a Starbucks and 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 most importantly, there was a Dunkin' Donuts there. Rest in peace, <laughs> Dunkin' Chino, by the way. <laughs> that, that gone is it? No longer a thing. It's gone after twenty three years. Rest in peace, Dunkin' Chino. Before we go to Does our everyone... recurring series here, I want to give some sickos breaking news. The eight seed Old Miss running Lady Rebels. I don't know if they go by Lady Rebels, honestly. Uh, they're winning I think against uh, one seed Stanford by eight with five minutes to go. And uh, hey, this oh. game, I've been 
kind of looking at it and it's not very watchable. It's very bad. Uh, Stanford is a really, really good defensive team, but uh, they keep going on these scoring droughts and it's not looking good for them to come back. So something to keep an eye Uh-oh. on. Um, Kamish, I'll ask you if you want to do the, if you want to do that this time or you want to save it till Tuesday, cause we're already running at one fifteen. I mean, it's, it's really not too long, uh, yeah. but it's up to you. No, let's yeah, go for it. We got six. I'm sure we got like a bunch of a bit. So we we done with the basketball. We tell, until TCU beats Gonzaga in a little bit. Otherwise, we'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah, maybe <laughs> we can break that at, at the time of this one. So we can go with the best season of all time for teams who are below 500 all time. The BSO ATFTWAB 500AT Part Four, I believe, of 39. <laughs> God, we gotta fucking trim this. We like, gotta, get, no, a, we're gotta get it. No, gotta get it. Oh, this is great. No, <laughs> no, leave it. Leave it. I want to. This reminds me of Colbert's better Noah District when he did all when he was like part four of five hundred whatever of better Noah District. This would have feel. It's only thirty nine. There's like five hundred districts. I am telling you right now that this is our fifty states project, and unlike Sufjan Stevens, we're going to get past Illinois. Yep. That's it. Perfect. All right. So let's go. Wait, is Illinois Um, in our? Is Illinois in this? God, I hope Illinois is below five hundred of all time. Uh, I don't think so, but I, I. it's close if they it are close, right spiritually they're, they're close but they had a lot of national championships in the early 1900s so red grange. Oh, hey boy you want to play football like red grange red, hey, red grange was was winning national titles <laughs> oh no the featured matchup on winspedia is still georgia tcu oh god make it stop it, so, illinois is nine games over 500 damn it they're, they're just barely close. there and bert Bert has elevated them. They were maybe under 500 before they hired Bielema. Oh. Come on, Bert. One bad year, buddy. Bert, Bert <laughs> saved them from this series. So, definitely. All right. So, I'm just going to uh, launch into this. I'm going to try oh, to make yeah. this as quick as possible. So, I'm I'm going with Rutgers this year. Uh, this year. Uh, uh, but I'm going with Rutgers. Uh, I'm going to give a shout out to the 1961 Rutgers 9-0 team as the second place Best team of all time for the teams that are below 500. Uh, not as good as the 1976 Rutgers team who finished 11 and 0. So Rutgers, can you imagine nowadays Rutgers 11 and 0? No, you can't. Can you? No. Can anybody picture a world that Rutgers is 11 and 0? I mean, no. they came really close to the Big East one year. Yeah, they did. They, they still lost like two. They, they were there. They were there. Close. But definitely never happening in their current conference. No. Well, no, maybe if they get team. what's the like they're gonna move to pods, right? Maybe if they get an pods. easy pod, yeah, Rutgers pod. that's true. Rut- the, the, Rutgers if, to the Big Ten West. If <laughs> yeah, if they can schedule and not get any of Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State, or Wisconsin, like maybe that's a year they can make a run, a miracle Rutgers run. In this case, is 1976. Let's think about to the bicentennial. Um, I start thinking about Lee Greenwood. God bless the USA. When this, I don't even know when that song came out, but. So, so when probably... you were when you were twenty five during the bicentennial bicentennial year, Kamish, how yeah, did whoa. that did that really help you get through Watergate? I know Watergate was a real low spot for you, the country's history. Well, did this help you through? You know, I feel like I feel like Watergate was a bunch of bullshit, but uh, <laughs> you open know. like a true Nixon man. Let me tell you, that's right. Yeah, Kamish, that's right. Kamish right. voted for Dick. Kamish we all know this. <laughs> Big Nixon. Guy. I am not a Kamish, uh, but no, it, definitely no. Uh, no, definitely just, yeah, I am not that old. <laughs> I am old, but I'm not that old. All right, don't give me that credit, but 1976, the Bicentennial Rutgers, they finished 11-0. and I just want to shout out their coach, Frank Burns, Frank R. Burns, no relation that I could find to Montgomery Burns. He was a quarterback for Rutgers between 1945 and 1948, and his head coaching career was weird. It's just a weird, weird head coaching career before uh, I'm sorry, his coaching career before he got to be the Rutgers head coach. So from 1949, after he graduated, to 1950, he was the Rutgers coach of the freshman backfield. So as we joked about, like, there's lower levels of band teams for Syracuse. This was real for football. Then he became the head coach of Johns Hopkins for two years. Yeah, Blue Jays. Then, then he took a break for three years and then returned to Rutgers uh, in 1955 to 1956, where he was the backfield head coach. Then he went to be the head coach at Chatham High School in New Jersey uh, from 1957 to 1960. And then from 1961 to 1972, he was a Rutgers assistant coach. 
And then in 1973, he finally got the call to be the Rutgers head coach, which, I mean, what a path. Like, you know, Rutgers, not Rutgers, Rutgers, not Rutgers, back to the Rutgers. Mama called. Then, uh, that's right. Mama called. Um, you know, this is what they say when the alma mater calls, you can't resist it. He was a great coach for Rutgers. Uh, his overall record at Rutgers was 78, 43, and 1. Cool. That, had to wow. put, that has to put him as like the winningest Rutgers coach of all time. I don't know if, if, if Shiano has him beat at this point, but he's got to be up there if not. He's probably like in second. Um, so, I mean, just amazing, amazing runs for Rutgers. Uh, his Shiano has years, one more win, but, oh. one, but way more losses. He's 79 and 83. Okay. There we go. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So, Shiano has 79 wins, but how many losses? 83? 83. All right, so this is the greatest coach of Rutgers no, all time based off of win percentage. Yes. Based off win percentage. So we're going to go 1976. This is ridiculous. The Scarlet Knights compiled, compiled a perfect 11-0 while competing as an independent, and they outscored their opponents 287-81. to 81. They finished ranked 17th in the final AP poll. I want to just give you the stats of their leading passer, rusher, and receiver. The leading passer for Rutgers that year, they played 11 games. The leading passer was Brett Kosop with 1,098 passing yards. The leading rusher for Rutgers was Glenn Kelher, or Kelher, Kelher, I don't know. I messed it up. With 764 rushing yards. And the leading receiver was Mark Twitty, uh, not related to Conway Twitty, with 551 <laughs> receiving yards. Wait, so... so they were not like a crazy prolific offense at you all. You don't fucking say. <laughs> you don't fucking say this wasn't a prolific offense. I have questions, <laughs> Rutgers. I mean, it's amazing, but it, like, like I said, they outscored their opponents 287 to 81. With those stats. Okay. How? Were right? They just like a black hole? Turnovers? It's like the sure. La Brea tar pits of football. <sighs> Some of it, I think, and I was like questioning this also when you introduced them because the I, I know off the top of my head who the national champion was in 1976. Um, and, Wait, who? Uh, th that would be your Pittsburgh Panthers. Um, oh, sure. When they're championships, they're my Pittsburgh Panthers. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, th the thing here, I think, is that like I was like, I had no idea Rutgers was good. They didn't end up ranked particularly high. And the thing is, if you look at their schedule, they played a lot of what would now be FCS or D3 teams. So yep. that did not do them any favors, I do not think. But I will Not hand it all. back over to Kanish. So in, in the season before, so they, they were independent. For a time being, they were in some weird, like, uh, conference alignment uh, called the Middle Three, where they Fucking would always middle play. Middle Three! I love yeah. these guys. Wow. It, it was called the Middle Three. It ended in 1969, but they still kind of played them for a good bit, but they weren't, like, considered uh, the Middle Three conference I, at all. Before really. you go on, hey, Beth, guess who the Middle Three were? So I've got Rutgers. One. Temple? No. No. Oh, man. I don't I know. I also don't know. Lehigh, Lehigh Lafayette. Oh, God. Oh. Oh, oh, dang it. I I was Most important sports. rivalry in sports is them yes. with Rutgers. The oldest, the Return. old men, the old dying men of college football. That's so Return. good. If, if college football were tuberculosis. Help. My the conference. Ottoman Empire. My conference is sick. The rivalry trophy of that is just like two old men arguing on a porch. <laughs> it's just, it's just syphilis. <laughs> it's Too just tough. syphilis. College football. It's just syphilis. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm reading the article on the middle three and uh, apparently starting in 1972, Lehigh and Rutgers were being referred to as the old middle three rivals, as it very gradually <laughs> faded out in usage. Oh my god! <laughs> Rutgers this is why we do this. League. This is Rutgers join the Patriot League. Okay, keep going with the '76 Scarlet Knights, sir. All right, so we're gonna go over the '76 Scarlet Knights schedule. They started on September 11th in 1976. It was at Navy. They defeated the the Navy team 13-3. Then at Bucknell, uh, they won 19-7. 
at Princeton, 17 nothing. You know, again, not high scoring at all for don't Rutgers. Need to be. Don't need to be. <laughs> at, uh, then they played their first home game. So their first three games were on the road. Uh, then they were home at Rutgers Stadium in Piscataway. They defeated the Cornell Big Red 21 14. Um, then they played UConn. They won 38 nothing. That was their biggest blowout of the year. Um, <laughs> then they went to their old middle three rival at Lehigh. Uh, and they won 28-21 then versus Columbia. For some odd reason, they played that game in Giant Stadium, and I was mistaken. Their biggest blowout was them beating the crap out of Columbia. 47 nothing in Giant Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. And 42,000 people showed up for that. <laughs> That's distressing. <laughs> I have concerns. <laughs> in tri-state traffic, like how much planning must have been involved to attend Rutgers Columbia? Everybody get me a jalopy. We're going to New Brunswick or East Rutherford. <laughs> there, there had to be, there had to be like you know, there there definitely had to be some sort of trains then, right? Oh, <laughs> hey guys, yeah, New Jersey Transit. Hey guys, hey guys, uh. hey guys, I'm gonna put something in the Discord. I need everyone to open the Discord up before I push enter because I need to all have immediate reactions. Make sure that's open. Three, two, one. Okay. It's sending. There's the program. <laughs> oh my God. It is a lion. Looks like it's playing a side drum with a Rutgers Scarlet Knight playing a fife. And it looks like a young lawyer also playing a side drum. I'm not sure who that is. Oh my is. God. <laughs> is that a program on eBay? I may want to buy that. Uh, He's got an L on his tie. Is, is that just Lehigh oh, being around for some reason? I it says it's presented by the Lions is... Sites Foundation of New Jersey. I don't know what that uh, is. It's that. Uh, Lions Club. It was oh, a yeah. bicentennial event. Everything was a bicentennial event. <laughs> it was a how bicentennial be... event. That's what they... How could it be a bicentennial Number event? Number 76 for the state of New is taken off his helmet. <laughs> Number 76 has ripped off his wow. helmet, but has not been flagged for the penalty. Because it's a bicentennial event. I'm so confused. Um, how could it be a New Jersey oh, bicentennial event with a team really from New York? Why was it Princeton? Right, so we'll continue the to game. the next. Go we'll ahead. Continue, yes, we'll, drive on. We'll go to the next schedule. I don't care if this podcast is long. I mean, whoever. No, I, I'll, I'll turn the show, but it's fine. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's so right. great. All right. So October 30th, they played UMass. They won 24-7. The thing on Wikipedia is they estimate the attendance at 20,100 to 20,400. So, like, they didn't have an accurate account for this. Plus or minus 300 Plus people. Minus it's fine. 300 people. They, they uh, Do you really want to count that? Uh, then they played Louisville in in Rutgers Stadium. They won 34 nothing. Then November 13th, they came down to New Orleans to play at, at Tulane. And they played in the Louisiana Superdome, which was less than a year old at the time and they played <laughs> against Tulane they won 29 20 uh with the attendance of about 28,000 uh, almost 29,000 in the Superdome it was a bicentennial event it was a bicentennial event Rutgers Superdome bicentennial event don't miss out just five bucks uh, I'm gonna not say the last game because the last game happened on November 25th all right so I'm gonna I'm just gonna hang on for that one. Okay. The last game on November 25th, because there was something that happened on November 22nd in this Rutgers season that confused the ever living crap out of me, which is is absolutely ridiculous. I, I threw in some headlines here. It says Rutgers wins 18 in a row, uh, and and that was after they beat Colgate, um, which you know again uh, that was the last one there. There they had they routed Rutgers. Um, and you can see like actual legit headlines from like 76. It said Rutgers best ever is bomb for U of L. Uh, just amazing. So on November 22nd, Rutgers football players who have put together the longest current major college win streak at 17 voted unanimously to not accept a bid to the new independence bowl that was scheduled for Shreveport, Louisiana on December 13th. So three Cowards. days before their last game of the season, Rutgers declined the bid for the brand new Independence Bowl in Shreveport, Louisiana. Rutgers refused Shreveport. The ultimate bicentennial event, the Independence yes. Bowl. I know. 
and just me, just my reaction is like, why Rutgers? Why did you spurn the Independence Bowl? It would have been their first bowl game ever. Why <laughs> Rutgers? Why? I go to Shreveport. Look Come on, you. Rutgers! You're in Rutgers. New Jersey. You're too good for Shreveport. 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 That's definitely not getting cut. Uh, <laughs> no, that's the title. Yeah, that's the title. Shreveport. Like listening to my dad try to pronounce Sherbert. <laughs> <laughs> Super. Okay. <laughs> Too much rum tonight. Noted. All right. So, uh, Escalante, I said my real name. Oh, oh no. Uh, oh, no. Uh, <laughs> who cares? Uh, he was talking about Lake. I'm talking about Lake. That's right. So, they spurn their their first ever shot at a bowl game. It is unbelievable why that they did this. They were unhappy because they were overlooked by some of the other 11 established bowl games the scarlet knights made their decision at a team meeting after late afternoon practice Rutgers, which was was 10 and 0 at the time they play a once beaten colgate thursday night in its season finale in giant stadium uh in the jersey meadowlands the game will be televised by abc uh, starting at 8 30 p.m in the new york area so this is like basically like yes network infancy that is Rutgers versus colgate in just the new york area the Independence Bowl had a 10-year contract with the Southland Conference to take the champion of that league as one of its two teams. As a result, uh, McNeese State, so Lake Charles, Louisiana, McNeese State would have played Rutgers in the bowl game. Shortly after the team meeting, the director of athletics at the State University of, of New Jersey phoned Dick Oliver, the commissioner of the Southland Conference, to inform him of Rutgers' decision. It's expected that the Independence Bowl will now extend its bid to champion to Tulsa, the champion of the Missouri Valley, Valley Conference. I cannot believe that they declined the bowl game. You know, I would have loved to see Rutgers versus McNeese State. Yes! McNeese State. Mm-hmm. McNeese State went on to beat Tulsa. Um, Rutgers did finally go to their first bowl game in 1978, the Garden State Bowl. The much basically, more a bowl game. Garden State Bowl. So prestigious, Basically, it still exists. Mm-hmm. If only. What? What? Who wouldn't love to go to New Jersey in January? That was great. What state? You're was already hell- there. What state was that bowl at? The Meadowlands. I say bowls at the Meadowlands. Oh, so the place they already play like two games a season at. Great. Good job for them. Yes. They they Parkers basically did. Have never played, by the way. They made a bowl <laughs> no game. Shit. No shit. No shit. That's right. Uh, they made a bowl game for themselves essentially, and they. They played in the first bowl game in 1978, and they lost that game, too. So they didn't win their first bowl game until 2006, until Greg Schiano came, around, came along. So that was their first bowl game. Uh, their next bowl game wasn't until 2005. Oh, but, you, but Rutgers has only been playing football since, like, the 1940s, right? Like, they haven't right. been playing football uh, since, like... Yeah, definitely. I don't uh, know. Uh, Wait, they claimed the 1869 title? Yes. <laughs> I love yeah. with Princeton. It's a split title. I know, because they each won one fucking game. There were two, there were two games that season. I know. And it wasn't That's actual the... football. It was basically rugby. It wasn't even that. It was, it was, like, it was like soccer rugby. Well, soccer, yeah. kind of. They, people were, Yale it. guys were two years football later. League. Two, two fucking yeah, years later, like, Yale guys were getting hand jobs during, you know, after they got scored. After they scored. <laughs> That's right. That was 1896. That was, right. still, that was still part of the game back then. Hey, man, hand, hand job hill has been around for a long time. Eternal. That's right. Shout out El Paso. Uh, but no, I, I'm still like baffled uh, that they declined the bowl game and then they had to go play Colgate. Uh, they beat Colgate 17-9 and they were not invited to a bowl game. I just don't understand. Like, you know, we're, we're from New Jersey. Shreveport is not good enough for us. Will you will you please read the next paragraph under coaches agree because that paragraph like almost sent me laughing. I had to dive off camera. I, 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 I am. I'm going to try to say that. I'm still recovering from my Shreve Pert era. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this one this one absolutely about fucking killed me. All right. This is this is great. The head coach again, Frank Burns. Frank Burns, head coach of the unbeaten Scarlet Knights, said, the coaches and I are in total agreement with this decision, and now we can concentrate all of our efforts on the Colgate game. The Thanksgiving night game with Colgate is the most important thing we have 
and the most important game in Rutgers football history. I am relieved that this is over and we can get back to what is so important to us. Beating Colgate. Winning against Toothpaste. (laughs) Sometimes you have a moment to put it in perspective about what really matters. And the answer is playing Colgate at Giants Stadium on Thanksgiving. That's right. It's what the Pilgrims would have wanted. <laughs> this is why we signed the Declaration of Independence. This is why. It's a bicentennial is... event. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 200 years later, it's all about the important things. 200 years later, people thought like, oh, this is absolutely what we need as a country. Rutgers football. I, I love the the program for the 1977 Rutgers team. Like, I could not find any books about the Rutgers um 1976 team it is just an absolute beautiful you know season i i just don't understand like the new jersey pride thing getting in the way is a little a little bit on the nose i think it's so accurate um, it's so deeply it accurate. Is, it's, it's just like i accurate. you know mm-hmm. it, it, it's just a little bit on the nose like a little bit stereotypical but the, the victor of a colgate would produce their third undefeated season in their 108 year history of Rutgers football which began in 1869 when Rutgers and Princeton played the first American football game at New Brunswick. Uh, Rutgers has never gone to a postseason bowl game, but only in recent years has it made a move toward big time intercollegiate football because it is not an, a well-known football team in the South where most of the bowl games are played. So they blamed it on the South. All right. Rutgers was passed over it's by those committees shit. that look for the named teams like name and quotes here this was in the new york times by the way (laughs) this whole article was from the new york times so deeply great however rutgers ranks as a major or division one team in college football although it gained seven of its 17 straight let's make that eight (laughs) eight of its 18 straight triumphs over division two teams the scarlet knights lead the nation in defense uh in scoring total defense and defense against rushing. The defensive unit was the strongest part of the Scarlet Knights team. I'm just amazed by this team. We're 11 and 0, but we're too good to take any bowl game. Hey Rutgers, do you know what gets you noticed in the South? Playing in Shreveport. <laughs> in a block, I mean, maybe they had a real bad time in New Orleans and decided the whole state wasn't for them. Wait, that's right. They went to Tulane. Yeah, they did. But they're too good for Shreveport. They went to New Orleans, but too good for Shreveport. So um, well, they did play in the eighth wonder of the world. So, so I mean that that is the story of the Rutgers team. I I just wanted to shout them out. It's just I I don't know why they turned <laughs> it down. Die is so good. I I just don't. I was just like, come on, Rutgers! It's your first bowl game. You cannot be picky. But oh, were they picky? <laughs> like, you come know on, what? Rutgers. They cursed themselves for the next 50 years, mm-hmm. and they deserved it. The Shreveport folks cursed themselves. They decided to create their own bowl game, and then they lost. But then they didn't win a game, for, a bowl game for 30 years. Rutgers, oh, how dare you. Uh, also, shout out to Hofstra for beating Rutgers. There you go. <laughs> wow. More oh, NIT. man. I had to just fucking take the oh, dagger on the side. More oh, NIT God. content. That's right. Again, the commish, you know, ULM only an hour and a half from from Shre- Shreveport. What happened, Andrew? Oh no. Stanford was down. <laughs> Stanford was, was down too. And then they turned it over. And then old uh, Miss Stanford. won Whoa. scored. And now they're down four. And they just inbounded it and turned it over again. It looks oh, like Stanford no! is looks like Stanford is the Stanford women are toast. Oh my God. It was such a bad pass. Are they and it looks like also the horn frogs like are taking a page out of Michigan's book. Oh, uh, the yeah. horn frogs have also decided to stop playing basketball and also just decided to be on their shit too. So yeah. they're hanging in. They're only down six. There's still four minutes. They might pull it off. Still four minutes left. There's a lot of time. Lot okay, of time folks. Left. I guess we will talk to everyone again on Tuesday. Everyone have a good. I will be new basketball before then. Oh, there'll be some. There'll be some nit action before then. So the, enjoy your nit day. action. And CBI. 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 That's right. That's right. Hey, hey, hail to Maybe. hail to Rice, man. Rice beat Duquesne without That's their right. fucking without their fucking McDonald's deliveries. Can't can't pull it <laughs> off. Um, okay, guys, we'll talk to everyone on the other side. <laughs>